What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to add page numbers to your document in various programs. Now as you can see I prepared a little sample document. I call it what's it called document and there's nothing much to it. It's just four additional pages filled with placeholder text and I'm going to show you how to add page numbers to this document. Now as you can see I have this document open in Adobe InDesign and I also have the exact same document open in Microsoft Word and in Google Docs because every program works differently so it's a different process for adding page numbers to your document but adding page numbers to a document overall is not a 10 step process so that's why I'm going to cover three programs in just this one video. So I'm going to start out showing you how to do it in InDesign, we're going to transition to Microsoft Word do it there and transition to Google Docs and do it there. So with that being said, let's get started. So instead of starting on the first page of our document, I'm actually going to go to the second page. So right now this is page two and this is page three, which is also said right here. So first things first, I want to give myself space to add the page numbers. And to do that in InDesign, we can go all the way up here to layout, then hit margins and columns and then this window will pop up. So a quick definition of margins would be the distance away from the edge of the paper. So if you take a look at the ruler that I have up here, it's a half inch away from the edge. And that's what it says over here. So typically when you open this window, this little icon that looks like a chain, that will be activated. And when that's activated, whenever you change the distance of one margin, it changes to all of them. So as you just saw me do, I changed the distance of the margin to one inch and it's one inch all the way around, top and bottom, left and right. But we don't want it to be that way. We just wanna apply that change to one margin. So let me quickly change that back to a half inch. And now I'm gonna deactivate this chain. So I'm just gonna click on it and now it's deactivated. So let's apply that change to the outside of our spread, which is right over here. So I'm gonna to go to the outside box. And I'm gonna type in a custom size and I'm gonna put 1.0625 and that should give me enough room to add a page number to the outside of my spread so once i have that i can click ok and there we go so the distance from just the outside spread changed and not the others and that's exactly what we want but there's also a text box on this page so i'm going to click the text box and move it over so that way it touches that purple line that indicates the margin Okay, and now we have enough space to add a page number. And now let's actually add a page number. And before we do anything, we gotta add a text box because a page number is a piece of text and we'll need a text box to make text. So let's go over here to our text tool, which is right here, and just drag a small box anywhere on your document, like that. And then we're gonna go up here to type and scroll all the way down until you see insert special character. And then go all the way over until you see markers and then click on current page number and then the current page number according to here would be number two and that's what popped up in this text box so real quick i'm just going to format that and once it's at a good format i can move it either up here or down here because with indesign you're free to move the text box with your page number anywhere on your page or spread so if you want your page number to be up here where the header usually is, or down here where the footer usually is, you can place it freely, which is one good thing about using InDesign to make your page numbers. And now I'm gonna kind of center this number so that way it's in the middle of this uh, distance between the edge and our margin. Not the text box, but the number itself, like number two. Okay, and I'm also gonna define that text style because if I generate a page number for another page, I don't wanna have to reformat it all over again. So I'm gonna highlight that. Then I'm gonna go over here to paragraph styles. And then there's a little plus button down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna click that. And then I define this paragraph style. So I'm gonna hit that. Then I'm gonna right click and hit edit. And then I'm just gonna rename it real quick. So I'm gonna name it page number. And then hit okay. And there we go. So that way, if I generate a page number for a whole another page and it doesn't format it the way I want to, all I gotta do is give this button a little click and it quickly formats to this text style. So a quick way to add page numbers to your entire document would be to simply copy and paste it. So I'm gonna hit Command C to copy. 
And then I'm gonna go to my next page, which is page three over here. And remember how we define the distance of one margin? It applied to this page as well. So I'm gonna hit, so I'm gonna quickly move this text box over now that we have space to add our page number. So to paste, all we gotta do is hit Command V and paste. And automatically it generates a whole new page number. And remember the number that we copied was number two. Our special character page number would be number three. And I'm gonna align it to the left too. So that way the number itself is centered in between the edge and our margin. And in addition to doing that to just two pages, you can really click on both page numbers at the same time so that way you can add those to more spreads. Let me show you. So I'm gonna hold the shift key, click on the text box with the number two, click on the text box with the number three, hit command C to copy. And now let's go to our next pages, which are four and five. And let's first give ourselves room to add the page numbers. So we're gonna go back up here to layout, margin and columns. Make sure the change is not activated. Then we're gonna to go to our outside box, or if you wanna do it inside of the spread, you can do that as well. But in my case, I'm gonna do the outside one. And remember to type in your distance in decimal form. So in my case, I'm gonna type in 1.0625 and hit okay or enter. And don't forget to move your text boxes over. So that way they sit on the margins and they also give you space to add your page numbers. I'll do that to this one as well. And there we go. And then all we got left to do is hit Command V on this page. And then our page numbers pop up. And while they're still selected, you can just go ahead and align them real quick. Move them at the same time. And there we go. We got page four and page five. Another way you can paste them to the page without having to move them would be to right click anywhere on the page and click paste in place. So that way the position of these two page numbers would paste to the same position on a whole nother page. So yeah, that's how you simply add page numbers to Adobe InDesign. Now let me transition to Microsoft Word so I can show you guys how to do it there. Okay, so now we're in Microsoft Word and like I said from the beginning, I have the same document open and now I'm gonna show you how to add page numbers. So let's go up here to insert. Then I'm gonna go all the way over here to page number. And then just hit page number. And then the page number window pops up. So this first drop box will be the position of it. Do you want the position to be at the top where the header is or at the bottom where the footer is? And that's what this drop box asks you. So that really is self-explanatory. So I'm gonna make my page numbers be at the bottom and it's already checked, so I don't have to do anything there. And then this next drop box would be the alignment. Typically, when you think of alignment of text, you may think left, center, or right. But when you're adding page numbers to your document, there's two more options for inside and outside. So just like we said, the alignment would be left, center, or right, so you have those options. But if I click on inside, this little thumbnail here generates two pages. And those two pages would be the spread that we just saw in InDesign. And if I zoom in right here, these two dots would be the page numbers, and it's gonna be on the inside of the spread. There's also another option here for outside. So if you want the page number for this page to be over here, and the page number for this page to be over here, that's what outside will do. So let me quickly change that so I can show you that. And see these little dots popped up over here and over here on the outside of the spread. So when you see inside and outside, when you're doing this, it'd be inside of the spread and outside of the spread. And right below that would be a checkbox, which is also self-explanatory, show number on the first page. So unlike what we did in InDesign, we didn't put a page number on the first page. In my case, I could have, but I chose not to. But if you want your page number to show on the first page, then really all you gotta do is check this checkbox. If you don't, uncheck it, simple. So now that I'm satisfied with my changes, I can click okay. And then if we scroll down and see this is our first page and there's no page number at the bottom, but there is a page number on the second page and it pops up down here at the footer like we defined. But now let's go on to formatting our page numbers. So we're gonna go back to that same window, 
and click on format page numbers. And then this window will pop up. So when it comes to the number format, Microsoft Word is asking you if you want there to be numbers, do you want there to be hyphens in between the numbers, do you want there to be alphanumerics or Roman numerals? That's pretty much what it's asking you here. So right now I have just basic page numbers like this, but if you want it to be Roman numerals, all you gotta do is click one of these. If you want it to be lowercase or uppercase, you can click one of those. But in my case, I'm gonna leave it at regular numbers because I don't understand Roman numerals that well. But let's say you have a whole chapter book with a fully developed outline. So here's the outline that I used for my how to create a table of contents in Microsoft Word video. But let's say you want Microsoft Word to show the chapter number when you go to add the page number. So that's what this checkbox is here for. So we're gonna click on that. But if you've already developed the table of contents in your Microsoft Word document, Microsoft Word will ask you what text style would the chapter head be? So that's what it's asking you here. So is it heading one, heading two, heading three, and it goes all the way up to nine. So your chapter head can be defined using any one of these styles, and that you would have to know if you made your table of contents. More on that in my how to make a table of contents in Microsoft Word video, which will pop up right here. But let's say your document has chapters one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And each section of the chapter would use letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's a whole other story, but when it comes to dividing your chapter with a section, that's what this box right here is asking you. How do you want it divided up? And it gives you a little example right here. But here are all the options you have. You can use a hyphen, a period, a colon, an M dash, or an N dash. So oftentimes I will see sections like this broken up using periods. So it would be 1.1 or 1.8 in this example. But if you're going this far as to create a page number, that's really up to you. But I'm gonna uncheck this box because I'm not going that far. <laughs> and for whatever reason, you can have your pages start at a number that's not number one. But typically, you'd want page one to be page one, page two to be page two, and page three to be page three. So that's why when it comes to this section of this box, I'm always gonna leave it at one. But let's quickly change this number format to have dashes surrounding it to see what that looks like. So I'm gonna click that, then click OK. And this is what it looks like. But if all of a sudden you don't like how that looks, you can go back up here to insert, go to page number, go to format, and just simply change that back and hit OK. And there, no harm done. But when it comes to formatting the actual page numbers, like making it bigger or making it a different font, you would do that the same way you would do any other text in the document. So I'm gonna double click the bottom of the document so that way I'm free to edit just the footer and header. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna go back to home and just format the page number however I want. And then it applies to each and every page that there's page numbers on. And typically that would be every page. But yeah, that's how you add page numbers in Microsoft Word. So let me transition to Google Docs so I can show you guys how to do it there. Okay, so now we're in Google Docs and we have the same document opened up here. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up here to insert and go all the way down here to page numbers. And what Google Docs does is it gives you these different thumbnails of what options you have to add page numbers. So this option would be to start on the first page and stay in the header, start on the first page and stay in the footer, start on the second page and stay in the header, and start on the second page and stay in the footer. So those are the options that you have when it comes to adding page numbers in Google Docs. But in my case, I'm gonna click this option and there we go, we got ourselves a page number on our footer. But what if I want the page numbers to start on the second page, but for the second page to still be page two? So let's go up here to format, then go to page numbers and click that. And right here we got all these options for the position of our page numbers, which we defined already with one of our options to be in the footer and it's already down here. And do we want it to show on the first page? The answer is no. And that's what we've been doing throughout this video. So we're gonna uncheck this box because we don't want it to show on the first page. And when it comes to numbering, we want it to start at one. 
or for whatever reason you want it to start at a whole different number, that's totally up to you. But I'm gonna leave it at one so I don't overcomplicate things. And then I'm gonna hit apply. And now let's scroll down to the second page and see we got our page number. Now when it comes to actually formatting the page number, like changing the text or the size of it, all we gotta do is go down to our footer, double click on it, highlight that text, change the font of it, and I'm gonna change it to this serif font. I'm gonna make that a little bigger, bold it, and then that same change applies to all these other page numbers on all these other pages. So we're gonna click away from the footer. And literally that's all there is to it. And here's what the print layout looks like. So you can see how those page numbers help kind of beautify the document. Yeah, I kind of like that look. But there you go, that's how you add page numbers to your documents in Adobe InDesign, Microsoft Word, and in Google Docs. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.